Lord, you thank me for the last blessing you got. Tell you, baby, here comes another one. Come on, here comes another one. Blessings in numbers. Yes. Blessings yes. in numbers. Yes. 
Mark 2, 1 lets us know that there's a story of a man who was lame. Hey Amen. If you go with me real quick to the book of Mark real quick, I want to go there first. I got to slow down because I've got excited. Mark chapter 2, watch this. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 declares here, it says that, and again, he entered into Capernaum. And after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together. Insomuch that there was no room to receive him. No, not such much was about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Verse 3 declares, and they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him, for the press, they uncovered the roof. Tell your name, they tore the roof off. Where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, uh -huh. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yes. Yes, but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Yes. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Yes. Who can forgive sins but God only? Right. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the sick of the palsy, he speaks to him, I say unto you, young man, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. This is the word of the Lord. For the people of the God. The people of God say, Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Woo! My, my, my. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk from the subject this morning. Focusing on the young men who got it together on behalf of their friend. It's good to have friends who will move on your behalf. Not just sit there and watch you go under. But somebody's going to do something about it. The Bible, before I tell you the subject, tells us in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 yes, to their two are better than one because yes, they have been they have a good reward for their toil yes, for if they fail one will lift up his fellow yes, but woe unto him who is alone when he falls and has no other to lift him up yes, again if two lie together they keep warm yes. but how can one keep warm alone and though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better was a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who no longer knew how to take advice. For he went from prison to the throne throughout his own kingdom. He had been born poor. I'm going to stop right there because I want to talk from the subject. Let's do it. Tell your neighbor, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. There is power in the spirit of cooperation and partnership. And I want to talk about that today, the spirit of partnership. God bless you. I'm glad to see my friend and my brother, my friend, my dear friend, Brother Craig Faison. Come on, Craig. Would you raise your hand, Craig? God bless you. 
This is a great man of God, loves the Lord. He's a natural path. They don't tell all this business, but he is somebody you want to know. And he's in the healing business. He's in the healing business. And I'll be able to share more with you later. We're going to have him come back and share with our congregation. Is that all right, brother? Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's give him a hand. He was stuck in on me. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for friends. This text that we're going to talk about today helps us to understand the power of agreement. Yes. The power of agreement and cooperation in achieving goals. This is important when we are working with God to allow God to tell us how to get the job done. Amen. Most of us have a tendency not to listen when we're not the one doing the talking. I'll say that again. Most of us don't like to listen when we're not the ones doing the talking. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. And there's power. And so as we focus on this message today titled, Let's Do It, this is a rallying cry for unity. Yes. It's a rallying cry of saying, come on and help me. Yes. I believe that when Jesus called, when he told Peter to cast the net to the other side of the boat, mm -hmm. when he cast it, it was so much fish that those on the boat couldn't do it by themselves. They had to call for reinforcement. It's more than enough fish actors than, 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 than we think. A lot of churches have a tendency to only work, focus on themselves and that's all. Amen. But the Lord told me to tell us today that there is plenty for all. Yes. There is more than enough. Yes. Hallelujah. And so we see here that in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, there is wisdom that's letting us know that two are better than one. Yes. Yes. Oftentimes when we try to live life by ourselves, we find ourselves by ourselves. Yes. In fact, if you watch any Discovery Channel TV, you'll notice that the, the prey, the predator, is always looking for prey separated from the pack. Yes. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying stay with the pack. Stay with the pack. Stay in church. Stay connected to the people. Amen. Jesus says, I am the vine. If you separate yourself from the vine, you're not connected to me. Amen. I'm preaching already. Yes. You got to stay connected to Jesus. You have to stay connected to the word. Stay connected in prayer. Stay connected to fasting. Right. That's how we stay connected. You stay connected in the music you listen to. Uh -huh. You stay connected to the TV you watch. You have to stay connected on purpose. Yes. Amen. Why? Because the devil comes to seek who he can divide. Yes. He comes to divide and to destroy. Yes. Ultimately, he desires to humiliate you. Yes. Yeah, he wants to get you. And listen, the more you try to do right, the more he tries. I know I said something. If, if you ain't doing nothing, he ain't going to bother you. My father told me a story many years ago about the devil sent his three little kids out. He said one, one went to the club. He said, how many did you get? He said, I got quite a few at the club. Sent another one out. He said, where did I go? He said, I went to Wall Street. I got a whole bunch of them over there at Wall Street. And the third, he said, where'd you go? He said, I went to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I went to church. He said, how many did you get there? He said, you wouldn't even believe it. I got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> See, the devil will always come after you, especially when you're trying to do the right thing. I believe Paul said that even when I would do the right thing, evil always presented itself. See, evil don't bother you when you're, when you're already captured. See, if you already belong to him, he ain't got nothing to worry about. Amen. Hallelujah. So there is power in cooperating with God and staying connected. Yes. See, this call of let's do it together, let's do it, is a rallying cry to do it together. A unity, and it's a call for discernment in partnership. Yes. In other words, when somebody say, let's do it, you want to make sure they're doing the right thing. Yes, sir. Oh, me and my brother got in plenty of trouble. By simply saying, let's do it. Yeah. Have y'all ever got in trouble with somebody saying, let's do it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Riley, he raised both his hands. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes people will get you in trouble yes, with the let's do it. Yeah. But there is a power in positive cooperation. Oh, the Bible tells us in Mark 2 of this story of these friends who work together to get their paralyzed friend to Jesus. Amen. When somebody sees you broken, they ought to at least try to help you to get to a solution. Yes. If you don't have friends like that, I always say you need to find a better class of losers. You need to find somebody else who can be around if they can't help you to get it together. And they overcame obstacles and saw a miracle happen. 
Ain't nothing more sad than to experience something and got nobody to share it with. That's, right. That's what I love about good friends. Good friends will celebrate your joy. Yeah. They will celebrate your healing. They will celebrate your victory. They will celebrate your promotion on your job. Yeah. A real friend would. Right. Uh huh. And so cooperation in faith can lead to breakthrough moments. Uh -huh. That's why you need those type of friends. You need somebody who's going to help you when you can't help yourself. Amen. That lame man can do nothing but lay there. But I thank God for a friend that said, listen, we're going to get you up if you can't get up on your own. Amen. Anybody ever need somebody just to pick you up? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a shame how often we're the ones picking up everybody else. But for some reason, when we're going through, ain't nobody that'll pick us up. But that's why I love God. He will send the right people. Yes, he will. That's why you got to stay connected to the church. Amen. You can't leave the church because one person made you upset. That's right. Listen, this is where upset people come. Right. This is where crooked people come. Yeah. This is where wicked people come. Uh -huh. They need to be in church. Yeah. Oh, don't believe me. Ask John the Baptist. John was preaching one day and he was preaching repent. And he said some, some Pharisees showed up. He said, you grew the vipers. Who told y'all to run from the, from the judgment of the law? Listen, sinners come to church. That's where they're supposed to be. Sometimes they dress up real good, too. Let me keep my head down. I ain't looking at nobody. Don't look at them. Hallelujah. The lepers had a spirit of cooperation in 2 Kings chapter 7. These four lepers. And I love how there is a group. Sometimes you got to find the right group. Uh -huh. These four lepers who refused to die. And these four lepers decided not to sit and die, but to take action together. It only took one person and said, why sit ye here and let us die like this? You ought to get tired at some point. I'm not going to die like this. Right. I'm not going to die in my sin. I'm not going to die mad. I'm not going to die frustrated and, and, and dejected and feel like don't nobody love me. Devil, use a lie. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Amen. I keep saying all the time, you're going to jump off of something, jump off of a chair and see how it works out. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't jump off of nothing. Amen. Don't give up on life. Trust God for something different. All these four, it only had one that says, come on, we can do something better than this. And the thing is, is, is that sometimes we focus on that one person, but what about the person saying, yeah, you're right. Amen. Let's do it. At some point, you got to learn and discern that something is better than what you're going through. Yeah. When people are encouraging you, and I've been in this place where somebody tried to encourage me, and I didn't want to hear it because I'd rather have been mad. Uh, yeah. Oh, y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hey man, you get upset with your spouse, he trying to apologize to you. I ain't talking to you, man. Get off me. Get off me. Right? Why are you mad? Because you're trying to make me not be mad. I won't be mad at you right now. I talk to you tomorrow. Sometimes we just want to be mad. Just want to be mad. I looked at a video the other day and the woman had a bad issue at the store and she took the purse back and the lady gave her a great customer service. And the woman didn't know what to do. She was expecting to fight. Uh -huh. And said, all right, you come again next time. Some people just want to fight. Sometimes we learn from the leper story that survival and success comes from collective actions. Sometimes you need other people to encourage you. Amen. Young people, I need you to understand, I would prefer that you be the one that encourages other people. Right. Why? Because people are going to either, you're going to either follow them or they're going to follow you. And if you've been taught the way, the Bible says train up a child in the way that it should go, that when it gets old, it will not depart from it. That means we've already put in you what you yeah. need to know. Yeah. And that means that sometimes you may get in a situation where you need somebody to encourage you. And your discernment that you have been taught ought to tell you they got the right idea. No, I'm going to hang with them. You have to choose your crowd wisely. Because the devil will take you as far as you want to go. And he'll keep you longer than you want to stay. Clap your hands, give him praise. He will make a fool out of you if you're not careful. And he don't offer junk either. He offer the good stuff. Man, you be living good. 
Now the Bible said that the ways of a transgressor is hard. Uh -huh. That's what my Bible says. Oh, but sometimes people in the world, they seem like they're doing better than the saints are doing. Oh, yes, they ain't worried about nothing. Yes, ain't nothing bothering them. They just seem to live forever. Yes, Some of the meanest people just won't die. Yes, and we'll look down at the Bible. Ain't looking for nobody. The devil said, I don't want them. God said, I don't want them either. You take them. Hallelujah. That's the way I am. I'm just mean because the Lord got me that way. You need to get saved and delivered. Hallelujah. Listen, there's another reference here in Matthew chapter 4 where the disciples dropped their nets. And when Jesus called them, they immediately left their nets to follow him. The fact that they said, yes. you know what? Let's do it. Mm. Let's go with him. Yes. They didn't hesitate, but they acted in unity. Yes. See, when one goes, it makes sense. Yes, sir. If all of us come together. Right. See, if I'm going to go into something and you're my friend, you ain't going to let me go by myself. Right. Now, if you even think it's a bad idea, I'm going to go with you in case you don't, you know, don't realize how to get out. That means if you go to Vegas with me, uh, Brother Doug, if you go to Vegas with me, if I'm sitting at the table playing something, you ought to say, Pastor, you don't need me playing at this table. You got church tomorrow. <laughs> Pastor, what we doing in here? Now, Doug, when I leave, you got to leave with me. You can't say, Pastor, you go ahead, I'm right behind you. Amen. We got to leave together. Tell your neighbor, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on out of here, Doug. You can't just hesitate when it comes time to take action. You got to say, let's do it. Let's get on it. We're trying to do something in ministry. And sometimes you get certain people who will respond one or two ways. They're going to say, we can't do it. And there's going to be some who are going to say, let's do it. I'd rather hang with the group who says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want to do something with somebody who says, you know what? You're right. Let's change the color of some yeah. stuff around here. Let's try yeah. something different. Let's try a different way. Let's go a different route. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, point two I want to point out is building together for a common cause makes a difference. Right. Mm -hmm. Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, that there were wall builders. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And even chapter 6 talks about how Nehemiah rallied the families and groups to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. But if you look at it carefully, Nehemiah didn't tell them to grab anything in their hands. Right. The Bible said that they said after hearing Nehemiah's testimony how God had given him favor, mm -hmm. they said to themselves, let us strengthen our hands. Yeah. Yeah. When are we going to speak up and say, Pastor, let us do something? When are we going to get to a point and say, let me let me help out some way or another? Yeah. See, we used to say years ago, whatever your hands find to do, let it be doing it. Yeah. Well, God still is looking for willing workers. Yes, he is. What can you contribute to the ministry? Yes, what can you contribute to the faith? What can you contribute to somebody's growth and process and development? How can you help them? The Bible said that Nehemiah got them together. And the people had a collective effort Amen. to succeed. Amen. I question you today, do we have a collective effort yes. to succeed? Yes. What things are we stopping from being progressive? Amen. Can I preach just a little while? Yes. What things are we standing in the way of because we don't like the way it used to be? Yes. Because we say, no, nah, this is how we used to do it. This is how we do it. We're going to do it the way we've been doing it. Well, how's that been working out for you? Come on. Things still ain't operating right. Things still aren't going well. But we still want to stand where we've been. Lord of God. We stuck. Tell your neighbor, I'm stuck. That's been our Bible study series. We are talking about being unstuck. Yes. Amen. We are stuck in a state where we think that this is all it is to it. But the wall builders came together and in the church and in our families, in our communities, we must work together to rebuild what has been broken. Yes. Single mothers, you need somebody to help you raise these boys. That's right. There's plenty of men around here. Those things that have been broken, you need help with that. That's why we come to the house of the Lord. That means that as people come to the church and need some help, we ought to help them. That's right. 
And we ought to help them without looking for something back. It is what it is. Amen. What if God wanted something back every time he helped us? Most of us wouldn't be able to pay it. Jesus paid it all. And all to him. I owe. Hallelujah. So this is where we see here that the brokenness must be addressed. Yeah. And when each person plays their part, uh -huh. uh oh, when everybody plays their part, the Bible said in Nehemiah that next to this person's gate was somebody else building on this thing, and next to them was somebody else building, right. and next to right. them, it's like four or five chapters going on talking about who's building next. Right. Sometimes we can't build because we're too busy worried about what somebody else is building. Right. Tell your neighbor, mind your own business, right. work on your section. Yes. Your section were all ragged and rickety. The foxes come through and knock everything down. You need to be focusing on your stuff, worried about mine. Yeah. If we build together, we're gonna have something solid. Yes, sir. Woo, my God. Amen. Oh, they came together. And so we see here that when each person do their part, God's plans come to fruition. Yes. The question is, what you working on? Is it God's plan? Uh. That's the question. Yes, Are you working on something that God is going to use you for? Come on, man. I'll tell you right now, this young man right here, probably going to be an NFL superstar. Yes. But what he's going to do with that yes. is going to give God glory. Yes. And we'll be able to celebrate with him because he's been raised the right way. Some of these young people here right now, you don't know who they're going to be. Authors, writers, producers. Yes, these are the same people who will spend big time money and say, Pastor, we don't want to buy you a whole nother church. Uh -huh. We got two churches already. That's okay. Let's upgrade this one. Put another level on it. Uh -huh. Y'all better give God praise for this. You don't know what God is going to do. Why? Because the work must continue. Yeah. It must. It must. When God is trying to bless you, stop saying, Lord, I don't need it. Uh -huh. God said, let's do something. I said, okay, God, let's do it. If God has already said you can do something, yes. stop running from the giants. He said you can conquer. Come on. Hallelujah. If he said you can overcome it, then overcome it. Yes. If you can overcome sin, he says, I've already overcome sin. Don't worry about sin. Don't, over, don't worry about this world. I've already overcome the world. Right. Hallelujah. So if he said you can do it, let's do it. If he said you can have power, death, and life in the tongue, he said you can speak those things that are not as though they were, then speak the right thing. Tell your neighbor, let's do it. Ezra was building something. And he had a challenge. While Nehemiah, though he succeeded, Ezra faced opposition. See, what people don't realize in the book of Ezra is that Ezra tried to do the same thing that Nehemiah did. But the people wouldn't do right. Oh, they wouldn't do right. We face opposition because some people attempted to partner with the wrong individuals. So it's just as important to make sure that when you say let's do it, that you're on the right team. That's right. That you're doing it with the right person. Yes. Hallelujah. And they begin to partner with the wrong individuals, and at the end, they begin to marry their enemies' wives. They begin to marry their kids and different things like that. Oh yeah, they was crossing the line all over the place. Uh-huh. And when they did this, Ezra found out when they went to go pay back the loans that they wouldn't leave the party. Sometimes when you leave the world, you need to stay out of the world. Oh, I said it. You need to leave things alone because once God done pulled you out, you need to stay out. You may not have the strength to continue to go back in and out. Oh, I used to be on the street doing so and so and so and so. Listen, until God has fully delivered you, I recommend you stay off the street. Because if you can't handle it, you'll be back out there. Uh -huh. Oh, Pastor, I was out here preaching the word. And, uh, can I hold something? No. <laughs> Anybody seen Brother So and So? Oh, I saw him out there. He, he, I don't know if he's still a brother or not, but I saw him. They went out and they wouldn't come back in. Uh -huh. And we find that in every situation that it slowed down the progress of the work. Amen. See, God has need of each and one of us. Yes, each, and each and every one of us. He has needs for us. Yes, and when you get in the way and you don't allow God to use you for his plan, Amen. you'll find out that it slows down the progress of the church. Yes. 
I need you to say, Lord, okay, let's do it, God. Help me, God. And so God will help you. We must be discerning about who we partner with. Yes. Not everyone who says, let's do it, is doing it for the right reasons. Right. So align yourself with people who share your faith values. Amen. Number one, make sure they share your faith and your values. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you go to point three, there is a danger of wrong partnerships. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells the story of King Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Yes. Jehoshaphat in 1 Kings chapter 22 mm -hmm. Partnered with Ahab yes, he did. in a battle that almost cost him his life. Yes. In the process. And we find that Ahab, his alliances and decisions were often disastrous. Amen. And here is Jehoshaphat, a godly man, uh -huh. trying to be friends with the world. Yes, the Bible said, How can two walk together except they be agreed? Come on, man. That means there's certain things, even though I love you, I can't be with you. Right. The Bible says, Follow peace with all men, yes. holiness without which. No man shall see the Lord. So that means I gotta get along with you. Yeah. But when you come to the point where it's gonna cost me my walk with heaven my and my walk with God, this is where we part ways. Yeah. At some point, you gotta realize that I can be your friend, but I can't let you cost me my soul. Why? Because if you're not going to heaven with me, what? I'm not going to hell with you. You can go by yourself. This is where I get off. And Jehoshaphat. Find himself in an alliance with a bad person. An alliance is that decision that was disastrous for him. It almost cost Joseph at his life. But listen, not all partnerships are beneficial. We need to see God's guidance before joining forces with other people. That means there might be some good causes out here, but those causes are speaking against God. And this is why when we look at the election season, we have to be mindful that we're kingdom citizens. Yes, we might be American citizens, and our duty is to vote. Yes. But it don't mean I'm in the alliance with you. Come on. Come on. I am for pro-life. Yes. I am for freedom of choice. Yes. Hallelujah. I stand for some things that, that, that I just believe that God is okay with. Yes. But there's a whole lot of things on both sides of that chicken that I don't agree with. Come on. Come on. You might like the wings, the breast, the legs, or whatever. It's all the same chicken. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The ghettos look the same as they did 50, 30 years ago. Nothing's really changed. Promises, promises. The chicken in every pot. Everything looks the same. Everybody's benefiting except for us. Hallelujah. This is why we have to be involved and engage and hold feet to the fire. Hallelujah. So there's dangers in, in the wrong partnership. Now, I want you to hear me when I say this. That the Bible is full of stories yes, yes. of people and individuals who demonstrated the spirit of cooperation yes, yes. by saying, in essence, let's do it. And I wanted to share with you that even Aaron got with Moses and said, let's do it. The Bible said that her and Aaron held up Moses' arm and said, let's do it. Joshua got with Moses as a son. He was his right-hand man and took over leadership after Moses that led the people of Israel into the promised land. He said, let's do it. Caleb got with Joshua and said, look, man, these other jokers are scared. But me and you, let's go take it. Let's do it. The elders of Israel uh -huh, got with Moses and helped govern the people. Don't tell them. Somebody, you need help running this thing. Yeah. No leader can make it by themselves. Right. And the women who supported Jesus, the Bible said Mary Magdalene and Joanna and, and Susanna, who provided for Jesus and his disciples from their own resources, said, Let's do it. Uh -huh. That means you don't have to be on the front row getting all the glory. If I can just be of help to somebody that will help the kingdom move forward, yeah. that's all I want to do. My father used to say that if I get to heaven and I don't have a crown, Lord, just give me a good straw hat. I just want to be a help. I just want to help where I can. The Bible said that the Jonathan, he supported David, even though he'd been given up his own claim, took a throne itself. That means sometimes you're going to give up some stuff. That means that person who needs the money more than you, you're going to pass up the promotion. He said, you take it, sister. I'll wait on the next one. Yeah. You say like Joseph, you may be getting out of the dungeon, but when you get before the king, don't forget about it. Yeah. You might be like a thief on the other side of the cross. 
let's do it. We had 300 people that said, let's go. It don't matter how many we have before. So I need you to know, people may start off with you, but they might not go all the way. But those who will stick with you, tell them, say, let's go. I asked 
said, how do people get married to her? He said, she invited me to dinner. She made my favorite banana pudding. He said, when she made the banana pudding and she gave me one to take home, she said, I knew she was going to be my way. And that was through his stomach. Mr. John Stewart, God bless his soul, he's going to be with the Lord. I believe that everything we do blesses somebody. You know that Barnabas in the Bible was known, his name means son of encouragement. And he encouraged Paul. Had he not got with Paul when nobody else wanted to get with him. Amen. Listen, when you don't want to help somebody, you see other people not want to help them. At some point, you got to be the one that's helping them. Right. Young people, you might be at the dinner table, at the lunch table, and other people don't want to sit with the other kid. You get up and go sit with them. Right. When you got some friends who are really your friends, you know what I'm saying? Let's go sit with them. Yes, yes. And if they suggest it first, you say, let's do it. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Silas, yes, sir. sitting in jail with a black eye. <laughs> bruised and beaten. Y'all can sit down. Sitting in jail with a black eye, bruised and beaten. And Paul got the nerve and said, let's give God some grace. Yes, sir. Can you understand? And Silas said, you know what? Hey, girl, you done got me in all kind of trouble. I will give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard the Bible say that when they begin to praise God, Amen. that the jail begin to shake. Come on. At some point, you got to get over what's got on you. Over on you. At some point, you got to just begin to give God praise. Lord, I'm sick with my body, yeah. but my tongue still works. Yeah. Just begin to give Him praise. Thank you. And even in the prison, they said that the, the jail began to shake and they found themselves on the outside. Timothy trusted the companionship of Paul to help lead churches. He'd never done it before, but he saw something in him. And young Timothy wasn't too young to get with an older person and say, let's do it. That means you got to learn to take wisdom from older people. That shows your wisdom. You ought to find yourself being around wise older people Amen. instead of foolish younger people. Yes. Yes. Nothing wrong with being friends. But see, in your wisdom getting, you'll be able to pass it on to your younger friends. Amen. Be set apart. Yes. Be okay with being different. Yes. My last person I want to talk about is Lydia. Lydia was important. Yes, she supported Paul's ministry by providing hospitality. Amen. And she even said, Paul, have church in my house. Uh -huh. That means that if this building fell tomorrow, uh -huh. if there was a storm, which one of you would say, Pastor, let's have church in my house? Uh -huh. I know Deacon Linda would do it because he got a big old yard, big old basement. Uh -huh. I ain't tell you, I'm sorry, I ain't gonna tell you. <laughs> See, some people only want to help when it's benefiting them. Yes, yes, yes. Linda didn't charge rent. She said, come on. Let's have church. We got work to do. Yes. Little help like that makes a big difference. Amen. But it starts with three little words. Yes. Two words. Let's do it. Yes. Three words. Let's do it. Let's build this church. Let's do it. Yes. Let's get us another bus. Yes. Let's do it. Yes. Let's get our parking lot filled. Yes. Let's do it. Let's change the sanctuary. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do some evangelizing. Let's do it. Let's get our Christmas program stuff together. Let's do it. Let's do some health and wellness education. Let's do it. Let's do some financial literacy stuff. Let's do it. Why are we saying no? It's all work. Let's get our choir together. Let's do it. Let's get the music department straight. Let's do it. Let's bring out our first gospel album. Let's do it. Let's go visit the sick and shut in. Let's do it. Let's pay off everything and do a mortgage burden. Let's do it. Come on, y'all. We can do it. Tell you that we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. I believe God has equipped us for some great things. Great is the Lord, and great is He to be praised. He deserves it all. And I believe that we can do more than we could ever ask, say, or think. With the help of the Lord. I just want you to know that God has already put you in position to do exactly what he needs you to do. Amen. A lot of times we forget it ain't about what we want to do. 
with what he needs us to do. Yes. And the great thing is, when we know our purpose is to understand that God is helping us to fulfill yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Paul had no idea when he set out to go on Damascus, he was going to have an encounter like he had. We have different plans, but God had a different plan for him. And I pray that each and every one of us have our own Damascus experience. And that God will blind us until we can see what he wants us to see. To take away everything that we think we want to see. When I tell you I thought my future was going to be something else, Jesus. saints of God, I need you to hear me. I was so heartbroken. Jesus. I was extremely wounded to find out that the future I had been working on for many years was not going to be as I thought it was going to be. But how many know that God's delay is never denied? Yes. This delay is not a denial. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, the Bible says. Yes, Lord. But I know that when it comes, joy is going to be there. Yes, and the Bible said, He that desires certain things, if it's for His glory, it's a good thing. Yes. yes. And so I know God is going to do what He said He's going to do. Why? Because my God don't lie. Yes. Tell you that, but God is not a liar. Yes. God is not a liar. You just got to stay focused. Yes. I just feel like preaching to you today. To help you to understand that God has a plan for you. Yes. If you're willing to stand and see what God's going to do, I'll say, let's do it. Let's stand up. Yes. Let's give God praise. Clap your hands. Give him glory. Come on, clap those hands and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray with me. If you've not been saved and you want to be saved, let's do it. Yes. You want to give life, your heart to God and give your life to Jesus? Let's do it. If you need somebody to come with you, grab that friend by the hand and come on down. Yes. Tell them, say, let's do it. Let's go down. Yes. Come on down. You can be saved right now. And listen, there is no age limits on being saved. Amen. You're not too young. You're definitely not too old. If you're breathing, you can be saved. You can give him your heart today. If you want to receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost, you can receive it. Yes. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will continue to heal those who are battling cancer. Because God is still a healer.
Walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm serious. Walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Walk in the authority. The authority. You have the authority to speak to demons and tell them to shut up and get out. Don't be in the devil. You tell him where to go and how to get there. Hallelujah. Young people, you have the power to get the devil off of you, even in your young age. Yes, yes, yes. And don't matter who looks at you crazy. That's right. You stand for Jesus, period. Yes, like I said yesterday, you got to be ten toes in when you're standing on business for Jesus. I'm in. I'm all the way in. You don't have nobody to prove anything to. You say, be saved. You got the Holy Ghost? I have the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the real thing. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you need to learn how the Holy Ghost works. Am I right about it? Don't say you got it and you ain't got it. Come on. I'm talking about know the Holy Ghost and actually understand it. Yes. As we're standing right now, I want you to bow your heads. Grab a neighbor by the hand. Grab a neighbor by the hand if you don't mind. Just hold on the phone. Let's do it. We connecting. Let's do it. Let's do it. Tell me, Riley, y'all cutting up. Y'all switch hands. Y'all switch hands. <laughs> Tim is missing a hand on this side. He got it by the coast. Come on this side. Switch hands with him. Switch hands. Check over. Tim, you get on the end. You get on the end. Tim, you get on the end. Doug going to have the same problem. Get on the end. Get on the end. Get on the end. Let's do it. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do 
that good one. Tell your neighbor, he's just been that good one. What's that good one? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. He deserves the praise and the honor. It all belongs to God. It all belongs to God. Hallelujah. I feel like God has led us here today. Hallelujah. As we get ready to go, take the Lord along with you. Big Mama said, You're going to need Him on your job. You're going to need Him in your home. You're going to need Him. You're going to need Him. So, what? Take the Lord along with you. Everywhere. Don't lay it down for a few minutes or nothing like that. Hold on to Him. The Bible said he's a keeper to those who desire to be kept. How many want to be kept? Come on, say, keep me, O oh Lord. Keep me, Lord. You're going to have moments where the devil's going to try to snatch you out of his hand, but guess what? Jesus said, all souls are mine, and the devil can't snatch them out of my hands. We in the Lord's hands. You got a problem, child? Put them in the Lord's hands. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. As we're getting ready to go, Father, bless us as we dismiss from this place. Go with us and depart with us. Remain with us, before us, above us and around us. As we stand underneath you, O oh God, we stand on you for your word. Father, we are in agreement with you. We are in alliance through the Holy Spirit with you. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. So God, those of us who are in the midst with you, we say, let's do it, God. Help us to be that church you're calling for. Father, I ask right now that you remove every barrier that's in our way. Have mercy, oh God. For God, every barrier, help us to work around it. Let the work proceed. Let it be finished. Don't let it be half done. Lord, help us in our families, in our own situations, whatever we're going through. Fix the broken places, the broken things in us, the things that we're dealing with in our own personal walk, God. Heal those broken places. Help us to reclaim what belongs to us, which is your will for us. Thank you, Father. Bless the work of this ministry and all the things we have going on. Bless the work of the ministries that we are in partnership and fellowship with. We don't only pray for us, we pray for our friends. Those are within the network. We pray for your churches everywhere, everywhere, around the world and then some, God. We pray for those ministries that are under fire right now. Where they are losing their lives because they are proclaiming Jesus. Lord, protect them in the name of Jesus. That little pastor in the little village, he needs us right now to pray for him, God may have a gun to his head at this very moment. Lord, help him. Deliver him in the name of Jesus. Save that young man or that young person, whoever it is that got a gun to his head, God. Save him in the name of Jesus right now. Bring this war to an end. In the name of Jesus in Palestine. Bring it to an end in Gaza. Bring it to an end, oh God. We speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. This election that's getting ready to take place. Father, I pray right now that you continue to lead your people. You said, oh God, that you are the God that can direct the hearts of kings. Just like you direct the streams of the waters. So God, we ask that you direct whoever's in charge. Every barrier that will stop us from exercising our right to vote, we remove it in the name of Jesus. Every person who is like the days of we ask that right now that you would give them inspiration to vote and to vote responsibly, not emotionally, but responsibly. And Father, we pray for the city of Douglasville. We had prayer on last evening under a big white tent. And ministers and ministers and people were all over out praying last night. Father, thank you for allowing me to be a part of that experience. And the work that is being done Father, I ask that you would hear the prayers of the righteous. That we're praying that you would allow this nation to be saved and once again yours. Father, bless everyone who leaves this place to return to their home safely. 
provide food and whatever nourishment they need. Let whatever they eat be nourishing to their bodies. And then, God, every pain that someone is going through who came here, God, I pray that as they walk out of these doors, they may still be hurting right now. But as soon as their feet hit that threshold, in the name of Jesus, I declare healing. Right now. That as they walk out, that they are healed in the name of Jesus. Those who couldn't make it to church because they were hurting so bad, I speak healing over them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now, God. Bless them to come next time. And we'll praise your name forevermore. Give traveling grace for those who got to drive close and even those who got to drive far. Allow them to return home safely. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Would you greet somebody in the love of Jesus and let us know your love? God bless you. If you are still here, ushers, please remain, please remain. The ushers that we can meet in the school, please remain. Meet us over here to the right, in the front over here. All ushers, all age levels, to the right, to the right. 